An unanticipated consumer decision to acquire a good or service just before making a purchase is known as an impulse purchase, or impulse buying in the field of consumer behavior. People who have a tendency to make these kinds of purchases are referred to be compulsive or impulse buyers. According to research, emotions, feelings, and attitudes influence decisions to buy, and they can be sparked by viewing the goods or by being exposed to a clever marketing message. Ways to Stop Impulse Buying Let's face it, making impulsive purchases can be entertaining, at least at the time. You enter Target looking for diapers and then suddenly, boom! The gorgeous throw pillows from Chip and Joanna are already in your cart. Whoops. Actually, this is pretty typical. An average of $276 is spent impulsively by Americans each month. That amounts to an extra $3,312 spent annually and nearly $198,720 over the course of a lifetime. Ouch! Those figures are required to be entered into our retirement calculator. And hear this. If you made an investment of $276 every month for 10 years at an average yearly return of 11%, you would have more than $59,000. Nothing puts things into perspective like the wonder of compound growth. Okay, so how exactly can you avoid making impulsive purchases? Get comfortable, because this is where I really want to assist you. I've come up with 14 strategies to help you resist the need to splurge. Number 1. Keep your objectives in mind. It may come as a shock to you, but giving in to an impulsive purchase won't help you reach your financial objectives, whether they be paying off debt, paying off your mortgage, or saving for the future. Any extra money you are saving to put towards those fantastic goals will be devoured by impulsive purchases and overspending. Don't put yourself in danger by doing this. Reminding oneself of the significant objectives you're pursuing will help. Number 2. Ditch the credit cards you wind up spending even more than the previously indicated average monthly payment of $276 if you charge those impulse purchases to a credit card and don't pay off the debt. Why? Because you'll also be paying that typical credit card interest rate. Yes, you will pay 16.44% more for those items you didn't intend to get and possibly don't really need. You people shouldn't use credit cards because of the lure of rewards. That includes store cards too. Because you can't see the money leave your wallet or the balance on your checking account decrease, they make it far too simple to turn today's buy into tomorrow's problem. When you don't actually have to pay for anything right away, which is how credit cards operate, it's too easy. Abandon your credit cards in spontaneous purchases. Number 3. Forget the card number. I'll admit it now, my debit card number is etched in my memory. I know, it's astonishing for a spender. I've used this debit card for internet purchases so frequently that I've really memorized the number. If this is you, you understand that this looks to be really effective. If this seems absurd to you, the rest of us are a little envious of how much more difficult it is for you to make impulse purchases online. But does your phone or web browser automatically fill in your card number? When you check out, is your PayPal simply a click away? You might want to think about removing those numbers from your digital memory if the answer is yes. Number 4. Engage in a no-spend challenge When circumstances are dire, action must be taken, and there are occasions when a no-spend challenge is the best course of action. If you've never heard of it, it basically works exactly how it sounds. You don't pay any money on non-essential items. You continue to make payments for expenses like rent or a mortgage, routine bills, electricity, food, etc. However, you don't spend money on things like dining out, going to the hairdresser, buying new shoes, or buying a new kitchen gadget. Basically, only enter a store to buy groceries that are on your list. Do not enter a store otherwise. Number 5. Stop using social media It's true. Using social media won't help you if you're having issues with comparisons. If you're aware that scrolling past everyone's highlight reel makes it difficult for you to be content, address the root of the issue. I'm not suggesting you have to give up social media permanently, but give Instagram and Facebook the boot for a week, or more, and see if anything changes. Even if you don't find yourself slipping into the comparison trap, social media is actually one giant advertisement for impulsive purchases. Someone is attempting to convince you to spend money everywhere you scroll. But if you're not using the app, you won't see all the companies offering spectacular deals and fresh merchandise that you may use your hard-earned money to purchase. Number 6. 
Quit making analogies. When it comes to impulsive purchases, this is a game changer. You'll never be content if you constantly evaluate what you have or lack in comparison to other people. We're playing a game where we'll never win when we start comparing ourselves to others. Take a step back and evaluate your life rather than focusing on what someone else has and thinking, oh, I need that too. Become appreciative of the things you do have. You'll discover that you already have a lot to be thankful for if you alter your perspective. Number 7. Take only what you actually need in cash. Determine how much cash you'll need to buy the products you desire and only bring that much. Even better, leave your debit card at home to avoid tempting yourself to make additional purchases with plastic, even the debit card kind. You cannot make an impulse purchase if you stick to your shopping list and don't bring any additional cash with you. It's practically not doable. That's the power of money in action. Number 8. When you go shopping, take someone with you. Accountability is crucial in this situation. Do you have a brother or a friend who won't hesitate to confront you and urge you to not make a purchase? Bring them along when you go shopping. Tell them you intend to purchase and urge them to talk sense into you if you veer off course. Number 9. Avoid shopping when you're feeling down. Don't let your emotions dictate your purchasing habits. You can be having a great day and decide to buy something on the spur of the moment. Or perhaps you're having a bad day and convince yourself that you deserve something good or that buying this stuff will cheer you up. We've all been there before. It's fairly simple to do. How can it be fixed? Avoid making any purchases when your emotions are bouncing around, whether you're happy or trying to cheer yourself up. Number 10. Avoid signing up to too many email lists. Has anyone recently experienced an extreme overflow of sales emails? I mean, with everything planned out and taken care of, I've been doing well keeping to my budget. However, when I check my inbox, I see 15 separate emails promoting successive deals. I wasn't even planning on purchasing when these advertisements caught my attention, but I had to see what was on sale, don't you think? We could all use a little unsubscribe in our life, guys. Number 11. Plan ahead when you shop. One of my favorite strategies for avoiding impulse purchases is to decide what you want to buy and how much money you'll spend before you ever step foot in a store. You'll be less inclined to cave into impulse purchasing if you have a plan in place. If you know what you want to buy before you go shopping, you may include anything on your list, from groceries to Christmas presents for your extended family. P.S. A meal plan is the greatest way to prevent impulsive shopping and takeout purchases, and you can have a free meal planning and grocery guide that can prevent stress and overspending. Number 12. Wait a day or more before you make a purchase. Listen, our devices are used for two-thirds of our bedtime impulse purchases. It's so simple to find what we desire and then purchase it with only a few clicks. Giving yourself a day or so to calm down after making an impulse purchase can be helpful in this situation. Once you've collected your thoughts and gained some perspective, consider whether you can afford the item now and whether you'll truly utilize it. As a straightforward approach to the purchase that will spare you from a ton of future financial stress. Additionally, be wary of offers that are valid for a certain day only. Don't let a deadline pressure you into making a purchase. If you can't afford it now, keep in mind the offer, put some money away, and be prepared for it the next time. Because a sale will eventually materialize. Believe me. Number 13. Give yourself the green light to indulge. Yes, I just instructed you to stay within your budget and you should do so at all times. But don't forget to include a little spending money for pleasure as well. Assign a line item in the budget to yourself and your spouse if you're married for your leisure spending. This may cost you $10 a month or $100 a month depending on your circumstances. Just make sure the cost is within your budget and appropriate. You only need to check your fun money fund the next time you're browsing the mall and anything catches your interest. Now you're free to shop. That reward or treat is no longer an impulse purchase because you've previously earmarked a little amount of spending money for it. Number 14. Set a budget and follow it. Priorities. You must create a budget. Stop right now and start using our free budgeting tool, Every Dollar, if you don't already have one. The worst part is, is that you have to follow through with it. The magic wand of a budget won't magically make all your money behave. You must decide where your money will go each month and then carry out your plan. Spending money should not be made if it's not been budgeted for. Yes, it is that easy and difficult. You're capable of completing this. Number 15. Make it harder to shop. We can pretty much shop whenever we want, from the convenience of our own home. 
This makes it much more difficult to rein in impulsive buying behaviors. To be more conscious when you buy, create some challenges or checkpoints for yourself. Take shopping apps off your phone and visit the store's website instead. Redburn advises erasing the credit card data that's been automatically saved on your preferred buying websites. By following these instructions, you'll have more time to consider your purchase. Number 16. Switch things up. Stop and find something else to do if you find yourself shopping while feeling irritated, anxious, or depressed. Take a stroll, turn on some music, or give a pal a call. You may prevent yourself from making such impulsive purchases to self-soothe by taking care of yourself in ways that don't cost money. Connect with your body and pay attention to how the things make you feel before making a purchase. Listen to your instincts if they're telling you not to buy something. Why do we keep impulse buying? Emotions cause us to make impulsive purchases. What we purchase is heavily influenced by our emotions. Our financial situation is strictly personal. It follows that when something's going on in our personal lives, it will also manifest in the way we manage our finances. Does some retail therapy sound like the answer when you're having a bad day? It might not be something drastic. Picking up a new baseball cap or a new pair of earrings could suffice. You justify it to yourself by saying that getting something lovely would help you feel better. Hold on. Purely emotional decisions are a proven way to allow impulse shopping to take over. Sneaky marketers are aware of this. To get you to buy, they'll exploit emotional appeals in their advertisements. Because of our past, we buy on impulse. If you struggle with impulse shopping and overspending, it's possible that you were never given sound financial advice. You can better understand the basis for your financial thinking by reflecting on how money was managed in the home you were raised in. This can also assist you in resolving potential conflicts over money if you're married. They most likely had a very different experience than you. Thus, you two are approaching this from two distinct angles. When we perceive a deal, we make impulse purchases. I definitely understand this one since I enjoy a good sale. Who wants to pay the entire fee after all? For shipping and handling, is it worse? Thank you Amazon Prime for making two-day shipping that isn't free feel like a sin. You guys, this is just a complete marketing ploy. A poll found that 64% of consumers make impulsive purchases because of a deal. You're much more likely to make a purchase when you believe you're receiving a deal or free delivery, and that's exactly what the marketers want you to do. I apologize, but that is the case. We make impulse purchases because we like to shop. Shopping actually improves your mood right then and there. Dopamine, the brain's happy drug, is released by the body when we shop. This love of shopping isn't necessarily a bad thing in and of itself. What's risky is when your passion for shopping develops into a shopping addiction due to all your impulsive purchases. Your body begins to depend on that dopamine rush, so you keep feeding it by increasing your expenditure. But the point is that it's simple to like making impulsive purchases and science says so. Well, this brings us to the end of today's video, you must know that I'm on a mission to get your financial life to the next level. That being said, Click on the video that popped up on your screen because you don't want to miss the opportunity to get more valuable knowledge completely for free.